I got something to test, to experiment with. I like making skillet pizza. I make it in a skillet. There's a recipe for that on my website, mobilehomegourmet.com. But, and it works, but I don't get the browned top that I like. I want to be able to put the pizza under the broiler as well as cook it in a skillet. The problem is my skillets have a plastic handle and I know better than to put this under the broiler. The heat will ruin it. I have one of these cast iron skillet, which works, but it's kind of deep. So it's not very easy to get the pizza out of it. And that's why I ordered something to experiment with today. It's a Lodge cast iron griddle. But see how shallow that is? So I should be able to slide a pizza in there while it's hot, put the toppings on, and then slide this under the broiler. And I don't have to worry about plastic parts getting damaged. And it'll be easy to slide the pizza out. For my pizza dough, I'm going to follow a recipe from America's Test Kitchen. And even there, they have more than one recipe for pizza dough. But this is one I've used before, and I like it. I'm using, by weight, eight and a quarter ounces, 234 grams of bread flour. If you're measuring by volume, it's between one and two thirds and one and three quarters cups. Put that in there. And then I have one half tablespoon of sugar and then between one half to one teaspoon of instant yeast. Use less if you're going to let the dough rise in the refrigerator overnight. I don't like overnight uh, fermenting of dough, so I'm using a full teaspoon of instant yeast. I like the flavor of fresh uh, bread. And then I need to put my lid on and I'm just going to pulse this to get this evenly mixed up. A few pulses. And that should be good enough. And then I'm going to pour in, this is five and one half fluid ounces, about five eighths to two thirds of a cup of water. If you're doing things by weight, it's about 156 grams. And then I have one half, before I do that, I want to put in about one half tablespoon of olive oil. I'm just going to drizzle some olive oil in there. Okay. And then I'm going to put in one half teaspoon of salt. And then mix this up until it starts to form a dough. And you can see there's dough in there. I'm going to process this maybe for another 30 seconds. That'll give it a real quick knead. That's the one nice thing about using a <laughs> food processor. It does things so quickly. But you could do this in a stand mixer. You could mix your ingredients in a bowl and knead by hand. And there is my kneaded dough. Oh, it looks good. Should be slightly sticky. Yes, it is. Good. Oh, it smells good already. I can smell that yeast. I'm going to lightly flour my surface here and get my dough out. And I just want to just lightly knead this a little bit. Make sure that it feels nice and smooth. It's a little bit sticky, as you can see, which is good. Okay, that actually feels pretty good. I'm gonna shape this into a ball, like so. All right, and then I have a bowl here that I've oiled, stainless steel bowl. I'm gonna put that in there and move it around a little bit, make sure that it's oiled all over, like so. And then there's a reason why I'm doing this. Let me show you that next. I like to use my Instant Pot as a proofing box. You can do that. Trust me. Okay, I have the bowl in there. I have about a cup of water in the bottom. 
with the trivet. I'm going to put my stainless steel bowl with my dough in it in the bottom. Rest it on the trivet. Put the lid on. Make sure that it's set to venting. And then I'm going to press yogurt. It's set for one hour. The temperature for yogurt is like perfect temperature for raising or proofing yeast. If you don't have one of these, you don't need to do what I'm doing. Just cover the bowl with plastic wrap, put it in a warm place. A lot of people like to put it on top of their refrigerator. Set it someplace for an hour, hour and a half at room temperature to let it rise. If you like fermented dough, some people do, cover the, the dough, cover the bowl, put it in the refrigerator for 12, 24, up to 72 hours. Gives it a little bit more flavor, but it's kind of a sour flavor to me that I don't care for. I gave this a wash and a dry. And what I'm going to be doing is oiling it well with some, I'm using avocado oil because it has one of the highest smoke points. Can I get that well oiled? I want to say it's up around 520 to 540 degrees, 270 to 280 Celsius. I drew a circle, about a 10 inch circle, on a piece of parchment paper with pencil. I'm going to turn that over so I don't get graphite on my dough. This is my dough. It's been in the, oh, look at that. It's been in the instant pot for one hour on the yogurt setting. And what I'm going to try to do is just kind of stretch this out. I don't want to flatten it too much. I don't want to squeeze the air out of it. I'm going to try to give myself a bit of an edge here. All right, I'm going to check the temperature of my pan. I've got one of these laser guns that you can check temperature with. This was just coming up to the smoke point. Okay. Hopefully that won't stick too badly. Then, while that's still cooking, so that it's browning underneath, I'm going to squeeze some sauce on there. Not too much. I don't like a lot of sauce. And then kind of spread that around. That's a pizza sauce, so it's made with extra oregano, so it's a little bit on the herby, herbal side. Herbal. Some of you like to pronounce the H. This is full-fat mozzarella. I'm going to put some Italian sausage meat on there. Yes, that's a plane going overhead, a jet. I do live near the airport. This is a trailer park put on some pepperoni. This pepperoni I ran through the microwave for about 30 seconds to um, get some of the fat out of it. I'm going to dress that with some olive oil because I like olive oil on my pizza. And then I'm going to sprinkle on just a little bit of extra dry oregano flakes. That's enough. Just a little bit more. So here it is out from under the broiler. Look how nicely browned that is. Does that not look like a wood-fired oven pizza? Okay, I've got to get that out of there and let it cool. So let's see, I have a offset spatula. And this should just pop right out. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> this doesn't require any effort at all. And I'm going to let this cool for about 10 minutes, then I'll transfer it to a cutting board. I'm ready to cut my pizza. Let's see, rather than doing this in eight pieces, it's small enough. I think I can do this in six, six pieces. And I want you to see the bottom. 
it crisped up while I was putting the toppings on, right? Look at that bottom. Look how nicely crisp that is. All right, who doesn't love pizza, hmm? That has a nice flavor to it. Almost as good as a good pizzeria pizza. I love how browned it is, how browned it is on the bottom. It holds up, it's not limp. That's a delicious pizza.